Why are we so worried about what's coming in this world? You know, the tribulations and all that stuff? We don't need to be worried. Look what Jesus says. Take no thought for your life what you shall eat. Okay? Take no thought about it, what you shall drink, nor for your body what you'll put on, clothing. Is not life more than meat and body more than raiment? I may think that this is a promise, that he will always provide food, clothing, and water to his precious children. And he does, and we can trust him, and he will provide everything that we need. But what you have to understand is this is part of Jesus' teachings. This is part of Jesus' teachings, not the whole thing. And it's very, very easy to take some of what Jesus tells us and ignore the rest. You see, this is a very true thing that God will always take care of you and always provide for you and always, always, always love you and nurture you, right? But what else does Jesus say? Let's take a look at that. Jesus also said that he spoke these things so that we'll have peace. And in this world, you shall have tribulation. So be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus promised in the middle of these, he says, I want you to have peace. And he says, be of good cheer. I want you to have peace and be of good cheer. But in this world, you will have tribulation. People want to take the top part and this part, bottom part. They want the good cheer and they want the peaceful part. They want to always make sure that God's going to give them food, clothing, shelter, money, resources, and protection. But they don't hear this part. But in this world, you will have tribulation. Look what else Jesus says. They're going to deliver you up in Matthew 24, verse 9. They're going to kill you, and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. People will be betray one another, right? But he that endures to the end shall be saved. There's going to be great tribulation in Matthew 21, uh, 24, verse 21. Great tribulation. So bad will it be. So we get a mixture. We get an expanded, full teaching from Jesus. And it seems hard to put those things together. But you have to understand that this life is temporary. And many of our brothers and sisters around the world for 2,000 years have suffered, starved, been burned, been persecuted, and now they're in heaven forever, forever in joy, peace, love, and happiness. So you need to prepare with the full measure of God's words and not just part of God's words out of context. Has God not provided for us? Sure he has. My whole life, he's always given me what I needed. But here's what you're gonna need in this final hour. You're going to need courage and you're, not, you're going to need wisdom and you're going to need patience and you're going to need extra grace to endure until the end. Now, if God has given me everything I've needed, food, clothing, shelter, job, money, and things my whole life, why would he not give me the grace, the patience, and the wisdom that I'm going to need to get through the other part that he said, which is tribulations and sorrows are coming and people are gonna hate me and persecute me and I'm gonna go through tribulations. Why would God not provide for me during that time? You have to understand that there will be a big test for Christians. And if Christians only believe and trust in God because he's given them food and he's taking care of them materialistically with water and clothing, if they only believe in God and trust God because he's done those material things, God's going to test us without those things and see how many of us really love God. Do you really love God if he doesn't give you the food, the water, and the clothing? Because the Bible is filled with scriptures that talk about him testing us like this. If you don't know that God, the biblical God, then you really don't know the true God. 
and you need to start meditating and focusing and praying and pouring yourself out to the biblical God and get to know him because he will test you to find out your real faith. Get to know him because he will test you to find out your real faith. And if you think God is only going to give you what you want or physically need, then you don't know the God of the Bible very well. We will go without physical things and we will be hungry and we will even die in the body, in the flesh. But the promise is beyond that and you have to grab a hold of that promise. And the strength that we need and the things that we need and the provisions that we need are not materialistic food and water. What you really need is you need supernatural courage and, an, and the ability to stand firm in your faith no matter what you face. Now that is better than food and water. Stop thinking about the things of the world. Jesus said, focus on the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And you need to start praying right now for grace, courage, strength, patience, and persistence. And stop worrying about starving to death. Stop worrying about not having water. God's going to take care of us. This promise right here will still be fulfilled. We're not going to, we, we don't need to be worried about these things. Even if I die from starvation, this promise still remains. Take no thought about it. Don't worry about what I'm going to be wearing. Even if I'm naked and cold behind a tree, starving to death in the great tribulation and I have nothing and I'm dying and withering and I cry out to God, why are you doing this to me? Where's my provisions? God says right here, take no thought about these things. Even at the moment of my death, I won't worry about it because I have a bigger promise and I'm focused on that. Focus on that and you won't fall into temptation to turn your back on God. I hope this makes sense. We need to become spiritual. And this whole thing we're going through right now is to find out who is spiritually his and who's willing to hang on to God no matter what we go through. And which God do we really serve? The true biblical God or some imaginary religious God that we've made up? I love you guys. Peace.